Time Warner Cable is pleased to be an underwriting sponsor for Carolina Week. Coming up on the April 7th edition of Carolina Week. I'm Sarah Moore. The Heels National Championship hopes are dashed, but the fans are still behind them. Following a high-profile murder, is it appropriate to do an anti-death penalty play? In sports, both basketball teams are done, but baseball and other spring sports are just getting started. Weathercaster Mallory Nichols will tell us when sunshine will return. All that, and is golf suffering a stroke? Carolina Week starts right now. From the James F. Goodman Studio in the School of Journalism and Mass Communication at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, connecting campus and community, this is Carolina Week. Hello and welcome to the Monday edition of Carolina Week. I'm Jonathan O. And I'm Carly Swain. Thank you for joining us. Well, it's extremely difficult to win a national championship, especially when a team plays its worst game of the season. Sarah Moore was ready to cover a big celebration after Saturday's Final Four matchup against Kansas, but that didn't happen. Sarah? It was a big disappointment, Carly. Roy Williams says it was one of the biggest embarrassments in his coaching career. And though the fans aren't ready to abandon the heels, they don't disagree with the coach's assessment. Before Saturday night's big game, Heels fans were raring to go. They packed into the Dean Dome and Franklin Street bars for the chance to watch Carolina and hoping for the chance to rush Franklin Street. But after a disappointing performance by Carolina, the streets were quiet and the fans were feeling let down. We could have done a lot more better, yeah. a lot more better. We, we've been fans since we were, what, like eight? Since I'd like Eric six. Montross. Six, Eric Montross. Six years old. Six years uh, old. Very sad that we lost. I think we could have done better. I think we did really bad in the first half. Just uh, the lack of enthusiasm in the first half killed me. We're really upset about the game tonight because honestly, we're devastated about the game tonight. Oh. Roy, but tell her hands, bro. We expected a little four. bit more than that. I'm just disappointed. What else do I just say? I think they should have won. They had a little coaching issue, they had a little playing issue, but other than that, I'm sorry, Steve. I've been a Tar Heel fan my entire life. We and got our ass kicked. But will the fans stay true to the boys in blue? Yes. Obviously. It's not the final, a if they're in the Final Four, we'll it's be back a, here no, next year. It doesn't matter if they're in the Final Four. ACC Tourney, champions! <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm still a Tar Heel fan. We're still going to do it. I mean, absolutely. I went to Carolina, I work for Carolina. I'm always going to be a Carolina fan. Most seem to stay faithful to the Heels. And then there were some who really just wanted a date. Oh my God, Tyler Hansbro. It's 7.04. It's 7.04. So now the big question is, will any of the heels bolt for the NBA? Sarah, when do you think we'll find out if any of Roy's boys are leaving us? Probably at the basketball banquet in the next couple of weeks. Tyler Hansborough said he might leave if the Heels won the title, but since they fell short, he'll probably be back for a senior year and maybe a date with that girl. Sarah Moore, live in the newsroom. Thank you, Sarah. Corrections officials have removed the top three managers in the Wake County Probation Office. The change was prompted by the group's failures in the supervision of Demaria Atwater, the suspect, in the Eve Carson killing. At the time of Carson's murder, Atwater was supposed to be under the group's watch for a previous breaking and entering and larceny conviction. The three Wake County of officers now have non-probation related duties and the state is expected to conduct an audit of the system's performance. Chapel Hill leaders are looking for your input about safety measures in several downtown neighborhoods. Officials want to know what you think about call boxes like this one in three off-campus areas that have high student populations. The call boxes, or blue lights, have speakers that can connect you to police in the event of an emergency. The proposal is designed to protect students who walk through portions of downtown at night. The proposal is for the North Side and Cameron McCauley neighborhoods and for East Rosemary Street between Hillsborough and Boundary Streets. The public forum is at 7 o'clock Tuesday night at Town Hall. The Department of Dramatic Art has planned to do the production Dead Man Walking since the beginning of the year. But with Eve's death, approaching a play about capital punishment has hit closer to home than anyone could have expected. The set is being built. The timing is perfect. You should not be finished moving through this space before the count of 30. 13, 14, 29, 30. Okay, count of 10. Well, 
almost. Rehearsals were carrying on without a hitch until the words on a page came to life. The murder of UNC's student body president, Eve Carson, exposed raw emotion and raised an important question. Can we do a play about capital punishment now? Dear friends, with deeply saddened hearts, we send you our love and support. As you and your At a time of profound grief, the cast and crew received some encouraging words in a letter from the book's author, Sister Prajan, and the project's national coordinator, Sister Maureen Fenlon. To have this campus take this on and then to have an experience of a horrible crime of one of their own pushes us even deeper than ever thought. Can they do this play? Is it right? These are hard questions and it's not, there's no easy answer, but more soul searching will need to go on. The cast has continued rehearsals and the play will go up as scheduled. A number of post-show events are also scheduled to encourage community conversations. The show opens this Friday in the Elizabeth Price Keenan Theater on campus. On Saturday, an interfaith guest panel will discuss the religious side of capital punishment. On Sunday, you have the chance to speak with Sister Maureen Fenlon, the national coordinator for the Dead Man Walking School Theater Project. For more information about the production and showtimes, visit our website, carolinaweek.org. The cast and crew of Dead Man Walking are facing an extraordinary challenge with campus emotions still so raw. Sister Maureen says the message in Dead Man isn't a political one. It's more about humanity and how we relate to one another. Today marks the beginning of Holocaust Remembrance Week. UNC's Hillel is hosting Tents of Hope in the main quad and pit this week. Students paint tents that will serve as shelters for refugees of the Darfur Genocide. Those who come out to paint hope the tents will lead to change. People can take an active role in kind of making a statement and, and getting the U.S. government to do something, but hopefully ultimately to provide help for refugees in Chad. Jay Ibsen is a Holocaust survivor. He'll speak at 7 o'clock tonight in Greenlaw 101. Stop by our website, carolinaweek.org, for a complete list of events. Sex trafficking isn't confined to foreign countries and big cities. The Carolina Women's Center hosted a conference recently to further discussions from its first sex trafficking conference in 2006. The FBI in Charlotte believes that almost a quarter of the thousands of victims who are brought into the U.S. each year arrive in the southeast. So in addition to general awareness education, guests met in groups to discuss ways to address problems dealing specifically with sex trafficking in North Carolina. Both science and religion play a major role in our daily lives, but we don't often see a connection between the two worlds. This past weekend, the Orthodox Christian Fellowship at Duke University hosted a conference called Reconciling Mother Earth and Father God. Members of the Nicholas School of the Environment and the Duke Religious Community discussed the link between environment and faith. Pete Fikos organized the event and says it brought together people from different perspectives. We chose the environment because what we saw was that, um, you know, traditionally people who are concerned about the environment and people who are concerned about religion are two uh, very different factions, at least in the American political system, the way we have it. The conference was supposed to end with a nature walk, but the organizers canceled that because of the bad weather. Well, when you go to a vending machine, you're usually buying snacks that are, well, not so healthy. Yeah, but coming up, we'll tell you about some healthier vending options and how to spot them.